the use of computer systems able to perform tasks that we normally attribute as a function of the human being, that is what AI is all about. AI includes visual perception, speech recognition, and the most important thing, decision making and translation between languages. AI, as I will show you in the next 20-30 minutes, will become an integral part of the healthcare delivery system only when its adoption results in consistently better outcomes and reduce costs. As clinicians, as a neurosurgeon, as an orthopedic surgeon, as a family physician, most of us are not going to implement AI unless there is evidence that this has altered the benefits which you as a practicing doctor and which the patient will get. Let's see how AI can be used. Now AI requires a thorough and systematic evaluation prior to integration in clinical search. A disruptive technology, the potential for AI should not be underestimated. Medical information gathered at the point of care will be analyzed using sophisticated machine algorithms to provide real-time actionable analysis. What does this sentence mean? Very simple. A 108 ambulance or any ambulance goes, you get a call for a polytrauma, a multiple road traffic accident. Using very simple technology, it is possible, it will be possible in the years to come, to make an analysis on the spot to decide, let's say, a, a stroke in evolution. It is wrong to transfer the patient to the nearest doctor or the nearest hospital for first aid. That saves, that will result in wasting valuable time. What AI will tell you is, AI will tell you that this patient probably will benefit from thrombolysis. You do not have facilities for a CT scan in this particular place. The nearest CT scan is 22 miles away, whereas you have a doctor 22 yards away. Do not take the patient to the doctor 22 yards away, but go straight to the CT scan 22 miles away, and you will be able to save his life. Scientific evidence for this will come, as I'll show you now. Now, the compound annual growth rate, I think it's important that I mention this. We are conducting this in the AMA, Ahmedabad Management Association. Most of you, many of you are also, shall I say, businessmen, quote unquote, entrepreneurs. You all look at ROI, that is a modern healthcare. And believe me, the CAGR is 40%. Every year, the compounded annual growth rate of AI in healthcare alone is an incredible 40%. And this is what the future is all about. Using AI to reach a patient is no longer a question if, it's a question of how, and as one pundit said, it's a matter of now. AI is not for 2025, AI is for 2019. AI should ideally address the problems which we face in normal clinical practice, not what computer engineers think we should do. AI should not be driven by computer engineers and by technologists, but should be driven by you, by you and me. We should tell the engineers, these are our clinical problems and can you help us. Only information that is needed should be supplied and only when it is necessary. We are in an era of information overload. There is so much of information, we do not know what we need to do with it. Well, existing workflows should be augmented, not necessarily redefined completely. Now I'm going to little difficult areas and as clinicians, as medical doctors, not necessarily exposed to this, it may be a little difficult, but we need to understand this. Machine learning, there are different components of AI. I'm, I'm very briefly summarizing this. Machine learning, the basis of artificial intelligence, is a field of computer science that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. In other words, they evolve from a study of pattern recognition. 
If you look back into your normal clinical practice, particularly if you're a radiologist here, particularly when you look at an X-ray chest or a CT scan or an MRI or the brain, it's ultimately about pattern recognition. Not only images. When a child comes to you with diarrhea and dysentery, it's a question of pattern recognition. You recollect the previous six-month-old baby who had a similar problem, what did you miss in that, and you correct it. So the brain recollects or try to trace a pattern. Every patient who comes to me, I try to put that patient into a box. Intractable epilepsy, intracranial tension, therefore it's a brain tumor. This pattern recognition can be done 10,000 times faster, can take into account 10,000 facts which the human brain may not be able to take. Deep learning is a subset of machine language that has networks capable of learning unsupervised. Now this word is very, very important. Most of us as residents, as postgraduates, and even in the beginning of our career, we go through what is called supervised learning. It's only when you have white hair like me that you go into a stage of unsupervised learning. In between, you may try to supervise the younger doctors. In deep learning, there is no supervision whatsoever. The computer learns without supervision. Then we come to NLP. Natural language processing. Natural language processing is the most important part of Most important part of a program to understand human language as it is spoken. NLP interprets the complex variables. You take India into account. We have Gujarati, Marathi, Tamil, different dialects, so many languages, but yet the human brain is able to process that. So this is called natural language processing where very soon the future of computer care according to my reading of the literature is going to be voice recognition. Doctors are not going to have the time to even fill up software. You are not going to have the time even to check boxes. So what you are going to do, you are just going to talk. You talk, talk, talk. As you examine the patient, you give your clinical findings. Voice recognition software will become so sophisticated that we will be able to understand. Yesterday when I was coming back from um, Tuvar, on, while I was in the car, speech to text recognition, I dictated an entire four pages. And it was amazing to see there were hardly 10 or 12 words which were wrong in four pages which I dictated in a car moving at 100 kilometers per hour. This is already available to every one of us. So this is the future. Now what are the components of AI? Fuzzy logic. Fuzzy logic is similar to human thinking and interpretation. This is the basis of entire clinical decision making. In the real world, unlike normal computer science, it is not a question of present or absent. In my second talk, I will tell you how today, 2019, it's difficult. I have 43 XP years after I passed my MBBS. I am very reluctant to certify somebody as dead. Today, I do not even know whether this patient is brain dead, whether it's brain stem dead, whether it's clinically dead or not. Gone are the days when you could say you are alive or you are dead. So similarly, in the real world, you just can't say you have a headache or you don't have a headache. The real world, you have mild headache, which may come occasionally, which may come sometimes, you may have some back pain. So you need to take into account multiple factors. Symptoms are described as never, rarely, sometimes, often, most of the times, always, etc. You cannot, you just cannot fill a box and say present absent. You cannot say married. Maybe married today, may not be married tomorrow. Maybe a divorcee, maybe having three wives. This is the real world. So when you fill a demographic form and then say married, not married, etc., you must have alternatives, however uncommon they are. This is what artificial intelligence takes into account. Data mining, the word is self-explanatory. There is enormous data, enormous data. So data mining is defined as the methods and processes to perform knowledge discovery. Data mining intersects database technology, modeling techniques, statistical analysis, and of course machine learning. 
So basically, artificial intelligence consists of machine learning, natural language processing, expert systems, vision, speech, planning, robotics. I am not going into the details. If anybody is interested, we can always discuss this later. So if you ask me to subdivide the components of artificial intelligence, I will put it into the following buckets. Knowledge, representation, planning, perception, deduction, reasoning, problem solving. These are not as complicated as it may appear. We do absolutely sure that in my lifetime, when I prescribe capsule ampicillin, I am going to prescribe capsule ampicillin bracket KG, 2, B, alpha, delta, gamma, something, something. My genome would have been analyzed and, and it is possible even today to find out how susceptible I am going to respond by the bioavailability of any drug which I take, whether it be an anticonvulsant or so, each one responds differently. In the future, we will be manufacturing paracetamol type A to Z. There may be 20 or 26 types of paracetamol and based on your genomic study, you will be given paracetamol type A, paracetamol type X, paracetamol type Z. This will go for every single drug. This is personalized medicine. Again, participatory medicine. In the future, it's already started. Patients will take an increasing part in the decision-making process. A corporate, for-profit, dividend-declaring company like Apollo Hospitals has realized that there is more money by reducing footfalls to the hospital. Today, Apollo Hospital is spending much more effort, time and money in preventive healthcare than in encouraging surgical procedures. Because from a monetary point of view, it makes sense to spend more money to prevent preventable diseases. So this is the future. The doctor of 2040 will not diagnose and treat as I was taught. The doctor of 2025 will be taught to keep a person healthy. That is going to be the total radical change. The, your main objective is not to do open heart surgery, but to keep a person healthy. So this is what is going to happen. Just look at this, a robot made in China scored 456 out of 500 in a national qualification test for doctors who were able to get, the pass mark was 350. The robot did much better than most of the doctors who appeared for this examination. Liability, if an AI system makes a false decision or prediction, it is predicted that in the next eight years, the first case, the first liberal lawsuit, medical legal suit will be filed against a computer. Now who, is because a computer took a wrong decision. So who is going to appear in court? Is it the manufacturer of the computer? Who is going to be designated as a manufacturer? And so on and so forth. These are things which are going to happen. I love this sentence. 100 years ago, electricity transformed industry after industry. You know that in the previous revolution, the industrial revolution, electricity changed the whole world. From 2019 <coughs> till the next decade probably, AI is going to change the whole world. Whether it be economics, whether it be history, geography, politics, whatever you call it, AI will be the new electricity of the 21st century, the third and the fourth decades. So how does AI work? AI basically works by making algorithms using, of course, a graphic processing unit, big data, analysis of complex data. Now let's come to healthcare. Medical knowledge is doubling every few years. 80% of medical data is still unstructured text and unstructured images. Ideally suited for telemedicine, privacy of patient data and so on. Now what are the clinical applications in a broad sense? The first and foremost is analysis of your health record. Your health record will start from the time you have been conceived. Antenatal health record till after you die. 
even after you die your sperm can be stored it has happened in all, all india and should a medical science a doctor went to court, a, fa, a woman went to court and got permission to use her dead husband's stored sperm for her to get a baby so that is where we are today so you will have electronic health records i by on my smartphone i will be able to look at the histopathology of my grandmother's carcinoma breast biopsy and based on that i may even advise a prophylactic radical mastectomy for a 10 year old girl because i have a 99.99% assurance that this girl will develop carcinoma breast 25 years from now so this is how medicine is going to be practiced illustrations of clinical applications brain tumors cause substantial reorganization of the functional system looking back how stupid i was not only me my teachers all of us most of us how stupid we were we were all taught that the speech area is broca's area hearing is in the temporal lobe occipital lobe 17 18 and great amount of neuroanatomy none of us even bothered to think that this is normal anatomy in a normal brain which has no pathology now common sense if i have a large meningioma if i have a big tumor there is going to be an internal reorganization and the speech area in the brain in a person with the tumor is not broca operate all these years we were thinking that this is the speech area and therefore we should be careful we should not resect any tumor because i'll interfere with speech the speech area has shifted the speech area is not what is normal before the tumor came into existence this is a fundamental concept in neurology in neurosurgery which has now been proved and these are one of the places where uh, intra operative electrophysiological monitoring intra operative mri and so on makes a tremendous difference however for this to be actually analyzed you require computing technology of a very high order and this is where ai comes into play again prediction models based on the data mining and machine language algorithms this is going to well, come back to that the pundits the experts predict the 10 years from now you will not require a histopathology biopsy every all surgeons here physicians here or will manage their treatment based on a biopsy report in 10 years from now the neuro imaging is going to become so sophisticated with artificial intelligence that instead of examining the cells under the microscope all you need to do is examine the cells through mr spectroscopy and mr imaging optical biopsy is already started today in india all india institute is, I, i also am a member of department of biotechnology a couple of committees and we have funded several projects of optical biopsy but as you pass an endoscope through the stomach based on the reflection of light you can reasonably guess that this is a peptic ulcer this is a gastric carcinoma and so on so non liquid biopsy liquid biopsy is already available and so it is available in ahmedabad you take 3 ml of blood and look at surrogate cells which have leaked from the brain tomorrow it will be possible to diagnose a brain tumor by doing a blood examination by taking 2 ml from a vein so this is where artificial intelligence comes now in a prospective trial of 150 patients scheduled for low back surgery ai outperformed clinicians outperformed neurosurgeons and orthopedic surgeons in predicting likely operative findings ai said this is a hypertrophy of the ligamentum flavum facet hypertrophy a experienced clinician could not make that out this is all published data ann again artificial neural network significantly outperformed existing regression models and clinicians on multiple performance measures in predicting head injury outcome i had written an article a few months ago on artificial intelligence and neurosciences a very exhaustive article with more than 80 references where i had summarized the world literature on use of ai in neurosciences alone so this is what is already happening or just a few examples diagnostic assessment of deep learning algorithms 
superior to physicians in detection of lymph node metastasis in women with breast cancer. Stanford University trained a computer with a database of 130,000 images of skin lesions representing 2,000 different diseases. The computer achieved an accuracy of 91% which was equal to the accuracy of 21 board certified highly experienced dermatologists. Clinical trials are already going on where with a smartphone you have a cutaneous lesion, with a smartphone you take a photograph, send it to a company, the company will multiple will split that photograph into thin, thin, thin sections and will tell you that there's an 83.6% chance that this is a melanoma, there's a 42.5% chance this is a mosquito bite, and so on and so forth. This has already started happening, and I'm sure in a couple of years, this will come to India even earlier. Diabetic retinopathy, I'm delighted that we are part of a, a big study. Uh, we do a major teleophthalmology project with the government of Andhra Pradesh. 195,000 fundus images we have already captured through distant screening, like similar findings, similar, 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 recognizes a pattern and then advises the tumor board. Perhaps you should use radiation before surgery or use radiation after surgery. Culture sensitivity for urine, that's how I was brought up. But today we are doing culture sensitivity for chemotherapeutic agents, personalized medicine based on the genomic study. Not only based on the human genome, but also based on the genetic analysis, molecular biology of the malignant cell. Gone are the days when you do hematopsin and eosin staining. Today we are talking of molecular biology of malignant cells. So this is the real world. Improving palliative care. Cochrane, I'm sure you all know about Cochrane, is using Microsoft technology. Oh, somebody doesn't like me, that's why the slides are going too fast. Give me a few more minutes. Oh, sorry, I don't know what happened. See, at the end of the day, a fool with a tool is still a fool. So, <laughs> I think the person behind the machine is important. This was a slide I prepared six months ago. Probably the number is much more. At that time, 826 companies are acting as venture capitalists, funding companies exclusively for artificial intelligence and healthcare. This is the future. Artificial Intelligence and Healthcare. I, I did this uh, conference in December 2017, if I remember right, and uh, somebody had asked me, I said, okay, I've always been interested in technology. I never thought that so soon we will be having drones. We have done some pilot studies. With a little bit of luck, by the end of this year, a lot of hospitals will be using drones to deliver pharmaceuticals, uh, uh, laboratory investigations and other things. So, it is the best of times, it is the worst of times, it is the age of wisdom, it is the age of foolishness, it is the winter of despair. We had everything before us, we had nothing before us. Charles Dickens could very well have been referring to AI. In the na native intelligence or natural intelligence era, white hair was considered essential for experience, judgment and problem solving skills using rudimentary tools and limited resources. I was taught by my teachers to listen, 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 the patient is telling you the diagnosis. This was what Sir William Osler said in 1930. Dr. Ramurthy would insist that we write our diagnosis from the history. Then we would examine the patient, rewrite our diagnosis. Then we would get a PEG, pneumoencephalogram, or a myelogram or an air ventriculogram. Today, moment headache, get an MRI done. The MRI doesn't even tell you whether the patient is alive or dead. The radiologist gives a report on the MRI. With you. A dead person's MRI is no different from a live person. The MRI doesn't tell you whether it's deeply comatose, whether it's alert and oriented. Clinical medicine, clinical medicine is what is required. 2020, I, again I prepared this slide a couple of years ago without realizing that we are just 11 months away from 2020. In 1980 when I got my MCS degree, one of the first talks I ever gave was Neurosciences in 2000. Today, 2020 at that time looked so far away. We are already in 2020. So this is what is going to happen. 
Google, IBM, Microsoft, Apple, and the Bear will replace Apollo Hospitals, Just Know, Sterling, All India Institute of Medical Science, PGI, Chandigarh. They may not replace, I'm exaggerating, but they will be major players entering into the healthcare arena. The smartphone will be a self-diagnostic tool, will include a stethoscope, ophthalmoscope, orthoscope, dermoscope. We have already done 120 tele-cervical cancer screening from my department in Greens Road, Apollo Hospitals with 14,000 feet height in the Himalayas, Kasa and Kina in a public-private partnership with the government of Himachal Pradesh. Tele-cervical cancer screening. So when we are able to do this, it's just a question of time before all this happens. This is my friend with whom I made rounds in Taipei a couple of months ago. Now, now let's come back to the real world. This is a very well-known slide among people working in this area. You can see there is an innovation trigger. There is a peak of inflated expectations. Right now we are going through that peak. The, 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 those who are involved in AI think that AI is necessary for everything. In a couple of years, we will come into a trough of disillusionment. We will realize that AI has got a lot of problems, a lot of complications. We will reject AI. Then comes the scope of enlightenment. And finally, we will reach the plateau of productivity. So this, everything will have to go through this phase and AI will go through this. The good physician treats the disease. The great physician treats the patient who has the disease. Medicine is a science of uncertainty and an art of probability. AI, for centuries, the essence of practicing medicine has been a physician obtaining as much data about the patient's health or disease as possible and taking decisions. History taking is vital. You ask the history, have you had the, the, a person comes to you and says, my wife has severe pain, I think it's appendicitis. Then the doctor says, I distinctly remember removing the appendix of your wife. How can you have the appendicitis? Say, no sir, I think it's appendicitis. See, this doctor says, no. But the doctor did not bother to get a little more detail of the history. The, the, then the husband says, yes, you removed the appendix, but this is the second wife I had. This is not the original wife whose appendix you removed. So history taking in great detail is essential. It's not just enough to find out if the wife's appendix was removed or not. Good and evil are two sides of the same coin. Time alone will tell if AI in healthcare will be a pain or the boon. AI will be adopted only when there is evidence that it betters outcome and reduces cost. We are in a stage of transition. All transitions offer great opportunities. AI will never ever replace a commiserating, sympathizing physician. Hopefully, the AI enabled clinician will now spend more time listening to the patient, not even talking, listening to the patient rather than being drowned in voluminous amount of data. A machine will tell me what is the diagnosis. I will listen to the patient, listen to the family and try to help them on what this should be done. This is my last slide I think. You would have guessed the slide on the top is the little babies preparing for the NEET examination and for the IIT entrance exam. The slides are the bottom. I mean, I get very angry when somebody says India is a developing country, we are a third world country, we are an undeveloped country. Which country in the world has a district with 100% computer literacy? The United Nations formally recognizes a year and a half ago, I forget the name of the village, Alakpuram, I think, near Al near uh, Ernakulam, Cochin in Kerala, was declared the first district with 100% computer literacy. You can see this non agrarian oops, somebody, okay. You can see this non agrarian this elderly lady, absolutely at home with computers. So this is the world we live in. And uh, sorry, I didn't look at my watch. If I had AI, the watch would have told me your time was over five minutes ago. Unfortunately, I didn't do that. I'll stop with this. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions?